everyone, me Tessa. Today I'll share how I burned this dark portrait on a slab of live edge oak. Hi everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm Anne and this is the dog of friends of ours. I made this as a gift for them. They celebrated their 12 and a half year wedding anniversary last June. I started this project several months ago and I worked on it in between other projects. That's why you probably see me wearing different sweaters throughout the video. This portrait took me a long time to make, so I had to speed the video up quite a bit. But I incorporated some real time footage, so you can see better what I'm doing and how long it actually takes. As I do most of the time, I started with the most important part of the portrait, the eyes. Those has to be right, otherwise the whole portrait looks off. It feels like I'm saying this all the time, but with animals, it's extremely important to draw, paint or burn the hairs in the direction that it grows. I have the photo of Tessa printed in the same size as the artwork. I have it right next to the wood, so I can compare the two side to side frequently. I have the photo as a reference on my tablet as well, to zoom in on the details and to make the screen a bit brighter when I'm working on the very dark sections. For the sketch, I only make a few marks to indicate some important features. I tend to put in the darker marks first to map out some landmarks in the section I'm working on. Later I can fill in the lighter areas. Also, I sometimes go back to refine some things in the section I did earlier, so nothing is actually finished until the very end. It's very satisfying to see such realistic animals emerge on the wood. I like the look of live edge wood with the bark. So when I saw this oak in a hardware store, I wanted to try it out. It looks beautiful, but I would never use that again for biography. It burns really uneven and you'll see all the grain running through the image, no matter how good you send the surface. The grain is a matter of taste. It's made on wood and it's just the material showing through. So you can think about the grain as part of the artwork. I, on the other hand, like my work a bit smoother. That having said, I'm very happy with the outcome of this portrait, it was all worth it in the end. Normally I would just glide over the surface without applying pressure, but with this oak I found that it works a bit better to lightly carve the fur into the wood with the sharp edge of a pen tip. I didn't use it as a knife to completely cut the wood. I wouldn't apply too much pressure, because then the wood soaks up all the heat out of the pen tip and that would also cause an uneven burn. Also, you risk the chance of breaking the pen tip, but it helps slightly better in the areas of the light grain. The nose has a completely different texture. I lightly indicated the shadow and highlight areas with a writer pen tip and applied the value with circular motions. After that, I stippled in some additional texture by lightly tapping the surface for some darker spots and with my engraving pen I made some lighter marks again. I used it in several areas of the portrait, also for the lighter fluffs of fur in the ears and to fix some dark blobs that got burned a bit too much in the areas with softer wood. The result is subtle, but it's there. I also used the engraving pen to lightly dig out some of the light whiskers. You can burn around the whiskers, or use a knife if you don't have an engraving pen, but I happen to have this tool, so I might use it.
Here you can see how I fix the lighter grain that didn't want to burn dark enough. I switched to a micro writer pen tip and filled in the caps. It's very tedious and you can't get them all, but it helped to smooth out the portrait. I did that in some spots where the caps kept bugging me the most. On the forehead there was an area of harsh sunlight in the photo. I neglected that and filled it in with normal fur texture. There are situations where some details in a photo just doesn't translate very well in an artwork. Because I didn't include a background in this piece, this random area of sunlight would be a bit weird in my portrait. But that's fine, you don't have to incorporate everything you see in the reference. When the face was done so far, I started on the ears. I procrastinated doing the ears because I always find them a bit difficult. They are full of details with all the different direction of the fur, the change in texture and the different values. You want to get it all in there because it's part of the portrait, but you also don't want to steal the attention away from the face by adding too much detail. But the face was done, so I had to start with the ears eventually. And I thought, when the ears are done, the hardest part is over. Right? I approached the ears in the same way as the rest of the fur, by mapping out the darker section first and then fill in the lighter parts. I found that the spoon shader worked great for the ears because of its slightly different texture.
When the ears were finished, I thought the hardest part was done. I was wrong. The neck and the throat of Tessa has so much changed in direction of the fur, from the whole project I had to pay the most attention in this remaining area. Also, certain areas of the photo were very dark where I couldn't see the fur, making it difficult to get an accurate portrait. It was certainly a test of my logic thinking and problem solving skills. Please don't get me wrong, maybe it sounds like I'm complaining. Despite it being tiring and sometimes causing headaches, it's a good way to improve your skills as an artist and to push your limits a bit to see what you're capable of. So no, I'm not complaining. These are the things I like in art. Yes, sometimes it's difficult and challenging, but it's so much fun to be able to create something beautiful. I've learned so much from this portrait. I have some larger slabs of pear wood lying around and I think I'm ready to take on a bigger project. Here you can see how I used the reference on my tablet to help me with the portrait. I increased the light of my screen to be able to see the details better in the dark sections. portrait was finished. How do you think of the end result? What are your experiences with working on oak? Do you like the grain texture? Let me know in the comments below. Have a nice day, until next time.